A absolutely massive news drop of Halo Infinite greatness was just given to us by 343. Talking about some things like dual wielding, playable elites, how equipment will play out in Halo Infinite, some audio logs, and loadouts returning. We'll stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. Now we have the Ask 343 video breaking down a lot of things that are super important to the community that's been asking for years about Halo Infinite, finally revealed in this video. So if you guys like these news and informational videos, make sure to tap that like button. Let me know you want to see some more content like this. If you're new to the channel or want to stay up to date with everything going on with Halo as we ramp up to the release of Halo Infinite, well, make sure you tap subscribe. So let's get right into the content here. So let's talk about the big news headlines that are going to be hitting from this video. One of them is going to be dual wielding in Halo Infinite, and it sounds like that's not going to be a thing in the game. This is what they had to say in the video. Uh, this one is, is there a plan to bring back dual wielding in Halo Infinite? Currently, no, that's that's not in the cards right now. We wanted to really focus down on the weapon, the gunplay, grenades, melee, and where we wanted to put that bet this time was on equipment, bringing equipment back. And so right now, dual wielding isn't necessarily there, but that's because we're trying to focus on everything, on all the other things that we're working on. So I know a lot of you are gonna be bummed about not having dual wielding. I'm a little upset as well, but honestly, it doesn't bother me too much because when I've been playing games that had, had dual wielding in them, I never really utilized them a whole lot besides like, Having an SMG, I'm like, well, I need a second one to make this weapon actually good. I think what this does is it allows 343 to create more refined sandbox experiences with these weapons. And so they fit much more of a niche. Because when you start adding in dual wielding, that really will mess up the balancing of a lot of weapons to where, uh, well, this combination of weapons is overpowered. How do you nerf that? Well, if this combination and things like that, it really messes up the sandbox. Personally, I kind of glad that there is no uh, dual wielding. Do I wish it was in the game? Yeah, because it's kind of fun to have two weapons in your hand at the same time. But is it better for the game as a whole? I believe so. And so I agree with 343 on the set to have no dual wielding in the game. The next big bombshell from this video is playable elites. I know a lot of people in the community have been asking for playable elites ever since, well, they took it away in uh, Halo 4. And this is what they had to say in the video. Will there be playable elites in Halo Infinite? No, the, we're not currently planning on supporting elites as a, as a playable character in Infinite. And the reason is, you know, this is a, a Master Chief story and a Spartan story, especially in multiplayer. We want to make sure that we focus on how Spartans battle against each other and that it feels fair and it's, it's competitive, it's balanced. And, you know, we love elites, but never say never. Maybe we'll see that one day, but right, right now the, the current plan is you're going to be playing Spartans. So yeah, no playable elites in Halo Infinite. I know it's gonna be a big bummer for a lot of people, especially for maybe your cinema creators, as well as just you people who enjoy your custom games or just people who like playing as elites. Uh, though one thing I definitely want to point out within the statement saying that this is a Spartan focused story. I think this also completely rules out playable brutes, which I've seen a lot of comments about that as well. I think just playable any other race besides Spartans is not going to happen. Personally, I really like that news because I hate playing against the elites. And the only time I actually ever enjoyed the elites in the multiplayer was in the mode invasion. And it sounds like we won't even have invasion coming back either due to having a Spartan focused experience, which I'm all for. Though I would like to see it as an option for custom games. I mean, why not give people that opportunity? It does again does kind of allude to like if down the line there's time and we can, then we will kind of thing. Uh, but at launch, no playable elites. Now getting into a little bit of the gameplay side of things, they go into more detail about equipment and how they'll work differently between multiplayer and campaign. And this is what they had to say. You all mentioned being able to hold multiple pieces of equipment in campaign. They're referring to our latest Inside Infinite blog. Does this ability also appear in multiplayer or is that strictly for campaign? Or the, the base multiplayer experience that you need to be able to find and scavenge the equipment that you find and you can only hold them one at a time and you use it and it's gone and you need to find another one. We are putting plans in place to allow players to customize the game via custom game options like Halo's Legacy 
where you can be able to hold multiple equipment in the multiplayer custom game that you're creating. So it sounds like with campaign, which was recently revealed in the February development update, which we covered on this channel, saying you can cover, carry up to, I believe, three different pieces of equipment at once within the campaign. That's a different change from what we saw from the gameplay demo back in July of 2020. And it sounds like also in the multiplayer, there's two things they brought out of that one time use and you'll only be able to carry one item at a time this also kind of makes me think about the grapple shot as well which we know is going to be in the multiplayer that i was wondering like if you have like three or four or five shots you can utilize with it it sounds like you kind of made it sound like a blanket kind of statement one time use and you're done sounds like that might be the same thing with the grapple shot which i'm actually all for having that be like a one-time use item because having that kind of traversal in a multiplayer setting is a huge advantageous ability to give to your players to just completely negate the map design and just cross traverse whatever you would like so it's really important to see that it's going to be one item one time use on multiplayer that's super fantastic and then also being super overpowered and be able to do it in campaign and also be able to carry multiple within the custom games which will i'm surely will allow really fun custom game options that come around for us this section specifically goes into the mission structure of Halo Infinite, and then that's a really good response right here. You touched on it some in the blog, but how will missions and other objectives be separated from each other in a more connected world? What is stopping me from grabbing a Banshee and flying it to an objective three missions ahead in the story? Um, in a way, the answer is do it. The primary narrative moves through the game. There's certain things that just naturally by the structure of the game sort of you don't have the opportunity to jump ahead and sort of sequence break and, and break the experience. The game embraces this to a, to a degree. The way it's going to play out is you might be dropped off in a location from the Pelican and there's your primary objective. You can see over the ridge that there's a location that you're going to be heading to. Um, but then off to the left, there's a, a UNSC Ford operating base that's now been overrun by Banished. Oh, do I go down there before I go to the main main story beat or and, and, and take that back? And then maybe I can pull in the vehicle to go use. I can uh, uh, gather up different, you know, my loadout, change out my loadout to what I want to do from the things that I've unlocked. Um, I look over to the right and oh man, there's some green smoke popped that's that's coming over that ridge over there. That's probably a, a group of uh, Marines that are uh, heavily bad, you know, battling for their lives against Spanish forces right now, I can go choose to rescue those guys. That would be something to do. And then over there, there's a big forerunner tower sticking up over that 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 ridge across the across the gap. Maybe I want to go explore that and go see what's going on there. Um, so there's a lot of choice that you get to make about kind of how you want to engage in things and what you want to go do and what stories you want to go uh, pursue at any given time. But then there's always sort of the anchor element of the the core story that's playing through that is ever present and kind of drawing you through the spaces and through the world as it as it unfolds in front of you gotcha so a player can't really cut ahead on the the main golden path storyline they but they can still go around and adventure and explore and find all these other cool things absolutely and we've 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 managed to craft that in such a way that it's not um it's not done through the concept of like invisible walls and just, you know, it just can't do it yet kind of stuff. It's, we've crafted the story in such a way that it's very uh, natural in the flow of how the spaces work and how the how everything's flowing. So it doesn't feel artificial, which I think is important um, when you're having this kind of a experience that we want to have be this flowing, organic kind of feeling experience. This was something I actually touched on in a previous video from a Q&A video that I did talking about how the mission structure could work in Halo Infinite and how something like a Banshee could completely break the game. But it seems like what they're talking about with this mission structure is that you'll have basically your next main mission that you need to accomplish is going to be in your golden path in a way. So, as you're playing, you will come across so many different types of side missions that will just kind of pop up. They'll go like, hey, maybe you want to try this out, maybe try that out. And so then while you're playing the game, uh, it sounds like you can probably just go wherever you want, which sounds much more open world-like than previously. So it sounds like what might happen if you take a banshee and just go flying way off the golden path, you'll probably just find nothing besides just like, uh, you know, the trolls that you can go shoot, which are fun, don't get me wrong, but not exactly the most interesting thing to do without having any kind of purpose behind shooting those patrols of bad guys out there. So it sounds like you'll still have your linear typical experience, which will help tell a cohesive narrative, which open world games tend to struggle with. 
where it seems like it's just kind of one random event after another to try to push a mainline story. But there's also going to be side missions out there that you can jump around in. They also confirm that loadouts are going to be coming in Halo Infinite. It seems like these different bases that you'll be able to find within the campaign are locations where you can choose maybe like your weapon, your grenades, what kind of equipment you want to run with, if you want to go with a vehicle or something like that into the world. So it's going to be kind of like, say, like Halo 4 loadouts where you get to choose your weapon and all that other kind of stuff, but not necessarily something that's going to be so strict that it might be more dynamic, say like in Halo 3. In this next section, talking about audio logs coming back in Halo Infinite. With Zeta Halo being a major character, will there be ways to find story elements within the world beyond the Golden Path? Yes, absolutely. Along the way, you're going to discover, you know, cool elements in the world. You'll see a pelican that's crashed and skidded across the terrain and it's, you know, burnt out an area. We, you can go over and discover, you know, explore that space. And um, some of these spaces, you're going to find things like audio logs. And those audio logs are going to be telling a lot more story about the ring, about what happened, about the, the battles that took place here, or people's personal stories. I'll also say like the art team has done an amazing job of just set dressing these areas. So you can look at a space and you can really see what goes on. And then when you listen to that audio log, it just complements that, that story and just really makes the, the world a much uh, deeper, richer space. The audio logs like are great. You know, there's great voice acting and, and background sounds. It's like a cool radio drama. It's just, they're awesome. They're really well done. So this is really cool. Uh, this is one way to really expand on this lore and the story that's behind the game itself for the people who really want to dive more into the expanded stuff when it comes to Halo's story elements. Now there are two different ways you can go about doing this kind of uh, audio logs. There's a good way and there's certainly a bad way. A good way is like Sadie's story that we had in ODST, which is a really interesting story, which is really fun to listen to and cool to find all these different audio logs. Uh, my only gripe with it is that it takes you out of the game most of the time when you come across audio logs. I would like to have the audio logs be in game so you don't have to be out of the experience, which seems to be the kind of like cutscene experience that we've seen with a lot with Halo Infinite, which they do cover in this video. We'll have to cover in a different video because that's a different type of topic for a video. A really good example as well of an in-game version of an audio log would be like from the first Division game where you come across these audio logs in these barren, snowy, urban areas Click on the audio log, it creates like this still frame, like hologram 3D kind of thing that lets you kind of gives you a visual experience of what you're hearing. So it gives you more context to the areas behind it. So it's just a nice little touch to provide more context to where you are and what you're doing. And hopefully maybe allude to something that's been coming on as like the final reveal of the story. So these are the big headlines from this video. I will be breaking it down in other parts, talking specifically about the ring itself, the art style, the other gameplay elements involved with the ring as well, and different kind of voices that they make for Halo Infinite, talking about certain kind of eclipses you can do with the Halo ring, which is pretty cool. So make sure you subscribe to the channel to catch that video, guys. If you've been out of the loop of Halo for the last few days or so, or just missed some of my videos, check out the videos on the screen right here. I got a link to all my news and informational videos right there. So thank you so much for watching. Greatly appreciate it. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.